join us. We're gonna praise Him. We're gonna sing of His goodness. Enter in through the gates. Enter in here with praise. Come before Him. Come bring your song.
Praise the Lord. Well, welcome uh, today to our uh, online service. I trust that you had a great week last week. And no matter where you are and where you're watching from, and you know that the Lord is with you and His presence is always with you. So this week, as we continue to um, touch on this subject of the pursuit of the presence of God, I trust that the Lord will minister to you and and give you a word today to strengthen you and to encourage you. And before I share the message, let us go through some quick announcements. And don't forget our online giving. Uh, As we are not able to come together physically as a church, and if you are uh, supporting us in any way, uh, even those of you that are even, uh, you know, as you're watching online, if you are interested the bank details are all there for our tithes and our offerings and missions funds and building fund. So take a note of that, maybe take a snapshot of it and that will help to, you know, for you to keep it for future use. So online giving, let's continue to be faithful in that regard. And we really need all the support from all of you as much as you can uh, to support the church here. All right. And the next announcement is live group online every Wednesday at 8 p.m. And we have just been 
having a fantastic a time getting together online to share and to discuss, you know, just different aspects of the Word of God and especially our discipleship uh, development uh, uh, program that we've been just talking about specific studies and we've been touching on victorious living as a Christian. So let me encourage you to join us on Wednesday, 8 p.m., okay, every Wednesday online. If you need the uh, info, do contact us and we'll send that to you. And the next one is our obviously online prayer and sharing. So the next one is going to be August the 23rd. So take note of that. We just had our prayer meeting last Monday. So it's every fortnight. So the next one is Monday the 23rd of August at 8 p.m. So that's the announcement uh, for this week. Uh, let us just commit this time uh, to the Lord in prayer as I share the word with you. Lord, we thank you today for who you are. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. And we pray today, Lord, as we uh, get into your word, we pray, Holy Spirit, you will reveal to us your heart, your intention, and your desire for each and every one of us. We thank you today, Lord, no matter what we are facing, no matter what we are going through, we recognize that your hand is in it. Your hand is with us. And, and, and your presence is always with us. We thank you for that. Commit this time into your hands in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Well, we've been talking about the pursuit of God's presence. As we notice the scripture in Exodus 33, verse 14 to 15, it says, The Lord replied, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Then Moses said to him, If your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. You and I today will have the opportunity to obviously to recognize that God has already spoken. Okay, He spoke to Moses and He says, My presence will go with you. That means God is saying, I will be with you no matter what you go through in life. And if you can recall last week, I talk about sometimes we are in a situation where we are sort of in the middle of nowhere. You've ever experienced that? You're in the middle of nowhere. You're thinking, oh God, where should I go? Should I go to the left? Should I go to the right? Or who should I listen to? Especially now during this, you know, crazy times that we're living in. There are so many voices out there telling you what you should do and what you shouldn't do, all right? But at the end of the day, you find yourself you're in the middle of nowhere. Is like in your darkest hour when you're thinking of all the uncertainties and all the stuff and challenges and obstacles that you're going through. You, you find yourself in the middle of nowhere. But even when you are in that situation, you got to recognize today God's presence is with you, okay? He's really promised you that He will never leave you, neither will He forsake you. In your darkest hour, and nowhere, like I've mentioned, often speaks about places of uncertainty, maybe of hurt, maybe of disappointments and uh, abandonment. Where maybe someone has left you, or maybe, you know, family members that in relationships that has affected you and you are in the middle of nowhere. But once you break these two words, this one word, sorry, nowhere, and when you recognize that God is with you, what happens? You split those, that, that word into two, it becomes now and here. So he shows up in the middle of your nowhere. All you need to do, and as I've said last week, you need to look at the right place. God's presence is not based on location. Doesn't matter where you are, you just have to look at the right place where the presence of God abides in you. And God is your protector. Very, very interestingly, as I was sharing last week about the life of Jacob, 
in Psalm 46, it says here, God is my refuge and strength. He is one, an ever-present help in trouble. Take a note of that, that word ever-present help. That means God is always there. He has never left you and He will never leave you. Okay, therefore, we will not fear. So whatever you're going through today, Psalm 46 is a word of encouragement for you. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Lord on the Most High dwells. God is within her. There you go. Once again, the psalmist encourages us that God is with us and God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts His voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. Can we all say an amen? The God of Jacob is our fortress. See, today I'm just, I'm just so glad and I'm so pleased that, you know, the things that happen around us, they're not going to shake us as long as you look in the right place. And I've said this and I'll say it again. Don't look at the circumstances around you. Don't look at the situations or the challenges and the obstacles that you're facing, but only recognize the God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done. The desolations He has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob, once again, is our fortress. You see, many of us in life, we will go through, okay, and you and I have experienced it, go through times of great celebration. Yeah, but then, but then again, we will also go through times of great challenges. You know, the amazing thing is this. I find that the greater the challenge, the greater the impact of God's presence. You see, the greater my realization of who God is. Because in many, many instances, in most of our lives, when we don't go through certain obstacles, we are not really uh, uh, that mindful or thoughtful about God's presence. And, you know, when God blesses you, you begin to thank Him, you begin to acknowledge Him. Very important that you acknowledge His blessing. And when you go through those challenges, you have to then also acknowledge that God, you are in control. You see, that's an great, amazing thing for me to, to, uh, to also discover for myself personally, that no matter what the situations of life brings before me, I will always have a sense of peace in the middle of a storm. Okay, I have peace in the even in the middle of my nowhere, where I'm I'm caught in a certain situation where I have to uh, obviously find a way out or, or or find an answer. Even in those times of my life, I can still be able to look up to heaven and say, "God, thank you that even in the middle of my nowhere, you are with me." One thing that I want to share with us today, I want to bring another uh, uh, example of a great man of God. We talked about Jacob last week in all his challenges. Remember the scripture, he says that, yes, finally, God is here, but I was not aware of it. When he woke up from his dream, when he saw angels ascending on a ladder and descending towards heaven and coming, coming down, and he woke up and 
he was where? He was aware, made aware that God is surely in this place. And he wasn't aware of that. But God was calling Jacob back to Bethel to build this place of worship. And you see, for many of us, as Jacob went through those experiences, you know that, and I talked about that, that he had many, many challenges. How his name was actually called, Jacob is known as Deceiver. And then when his name was changed to Israel, the Prince of God, that was when he wrestled with an angel and the angel touched the hip of his socket. And, and God began to change his name from Jacob to Israel, which then obviously brought into, uh, 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 into the lineage of the Messiah. You see, Jacob went through those challenges, but then he realizes that God has always been with him. And so many, okay, get easily Take a note of this, okay? This is the word I want to share with us today. So many get easily confused. The presence of God with the absence of problems. Let me say that again. So many get easily confused. The presence of God with the absence of problems. So people think, Oh God, you're with me and I don't have to uh, uh, go through all these challenges. Lord, when you're with me, everything is going to be sweet. Everything is going to be easy. But that's not the case. You and I know, okay? Life is filled with challenges. When we view our lives, challenges through God's perspective, it looks very different. You see, your perspective and my perspective, when we look at life's challenges, we only see it at a certain uh, um, view, with a certain view or at a certain angle. But when God looks at our lives and when we look at the challenges that we face from God's perspective, it looks very different. Because God is obviously drawing you and I and bringing us in every step of our journey, in every step of our Christian walk, He is molding us and shaping us and changing us to be more and more like Jesus. You see, we all understand and we all have those encounters in our lives where we are saying, God, I really need you. In this situation I'm going through, I really need you, God. Why? Because it is in those moments, it is in those times where our dependency has now changed. Because so often we tend to depend on our own strength, our own abilities, our own schemes and our own workings. But God allows us to go through those challenges so that it shifts our perspective on life and the way we look at life to then to be what? Uh, based on how God sees it. God's presence is always there. But the problem is our focus is not always on Him. So as we pursue, as we seek, as we run after, okay, the heart of God, coming back to the heart of God and the pursuit of His presence, we've got to understand now, like I said, before, okay, just remember, bring your focus back to where God is, to where you first met Him, to where you first experienced His blessing, to where you first experienced that, you know, his, his, just the reality of who He is. I have in my life experienced many things in my journey with God things that I've seen, the way that I've seen God bless, I've seen God move, I've seen God healed, I've seen God provide. You know, even in this um, season of, of, of the pandemic, even in this hardest of times where uh, many families, obviously many businesses are struggling, 
But even now, I can still see the hand of God and His provision into my life, my family, and the business that I run. I can still see incredible provision of God. All right? And why? Because I've always recognized that no matter what I go through in life, no matter what stands before me, God, my focus is not on those things. I do think about it. Obviously, there are days of thinking, okay, how is this going to work out? How is this going to happen? But the moment I say, Lord, it is in your hands, straight away, in that instance, I have already acknowledged that God is with me. God is my protector, okay? The enemy will try and take you out. I'm telling you now, even right now, even through this season of many uncertainties and many challenges, okay, that the enemy will, through this season, use the situations that we are facing to distract you, to use the situation that we are facing right now to get you off track in your journey and in your relationship with God. Now, it is, it is sad, but it is true. And I'm telling you now, many Christians, even through this season, some of them have slowly backed away, all right? It's just because they're not able to meet together physically in a church, all right? Some of us, obviously, in many, many nations as well that are meeting online. But you know what? The the sad reality is some people have lost that zeal and that passion and that that love for God and they are slowly being sidetracked by the enemy. You may know of some people that have obviously gone down that track. Now, that's why I'm saying to you, in this season, in this time, you've got to be very watchful, okay, and start to look at things from God's perspective. Don't just look at all the problems and the situation. Look at it from God's perspective. God, in this season, what are you trying to show me? What are you trying to teach me? Help me continue to be fervent, to be steadfast in my love, in my relationship with you, in my journey and my walk with you. Lord, do not allow the enemy to take you off your tracks. Okay? And I know that now, like I said before, many, many Christians may be struggling during this season of the pandemic. But today, let me just bring to you another example of a great man of God in the Bible. His name is Elisha. Elisha, who is obviously uh, um, mentored by Elijah, has done incredible miracles that God has used him in so many occasions as you study the book of 1 Kings and 2 Kings, where God uses Elisha. Elisha had a desire to have a double portion of the anointing of Elijah. And you and I know, as you read this story, for Elisha, the situations and the things that he encountered, okay? And let us, let us read today in 2 Kings chapter 6, all right? We're going to go from verses 8 to 23, but let me just capture the first few verses to begin with. His presence abides on the inside. When we are talking about the pursuit of God's presence, and many times you've heard me say this last week and this week, that God is with you, all right? He has never left you and He will never leave you. He will not forsake you. But we need to bring our attention and I will search on who God is from his perspective. Reading from verse 8, 2 Kings chapter 6. Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. The man of God sent word to the king of Israel, Beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. 
Time and again, Elisha warned the king so that he was on guard in such places. Listen to me very carefully this afternoon. You see, the enemy will want to destroy you and I even through this season. And as the king of Aram was at war with Israel, look what he did or what he was planning to do. He was planning to set up ambushes and set up his camp in such and such a place. So there are many places, obviously, the king of Aram is thinking about where he can trap the nation of Israel and to annihilate the nation. But praise be to God, there was a man called Elisha. The Bible says he is a man of God and he seemed to know everything that the king of Aram is doing. He seemed to know his plans. Now, that was an incredible. How could somebody who does not obviously connect with the king of Aram happen to know his plans? Happen to know what King Aram is plotting to do to destroy Israel? You see, the story is this, that there is a man on the inside. There is an answer that God is wanting to show Israel through the prophet Elisha. Now, the battles we are now fighting can be avoided if we learn from our previous battles. Many people, this is the, this is the saddest part of their lives, where they have went through one aspect of battle in their life, but they never learn from it. So what happens? They go back and make the same mistakes over and over and over and over again. All right? They just never learn from their previous experience. Now, if you have been caught in a certain thing and you know that you may be struggling in a certain area, for you, that's a battle. And where does the battle begin? You see, most of the time, the battle actually begins here in our mind. It is always starting in our mind. You see, the king of Aram had thoughts in his mind, correct? Where he's going to set up camp in such and such a place. He is already planning in his mind how to destroy Israel. And you and I, when we face what we are facing now, our current battles, some of these battles, we don't really need to fight them anymore. But we are still fighting them. Why? Because we haven't learned from our past battles. If something that you know that you, you, that you struggle with, whatever it is, it could be the area of faith, it could be the area of your personal life, your thought life, whatever it is you, that you have struggled with in your battle, if you can learn from those things and begin to say, God, I thank you that at the end of the day, there is a man on the inside. There is a voice on the inside of each one of us that is guiding us. If you can recall, I think it was last month or the month before, I talked about the arrow of victory. Remember that message? It talks about how the, the, the Arameans were coming to destroy Israel. And the Lord said to the prophet to tell the king to shoot the arrow, not the arrow of defeat, but shoot the arrow of what? Victory. This is the victory. God has already given the victory to us. But the problem is we are not actually understanding how to lay a hold of the victory by really sticking close and understanding God is with us. I don't have to go back and fight the old battles. I have learned from them. You know, most of us in life, if you have learned from a previous experience, something that you know that has triggered something in your life, something that maybe, like I said, a mistake that you've made, you've got to learn from that and not go back in there and do it again. Because then you keep fighting the old battles, you never seem to move ahead to fulfill God's purpose. Some of the battles we fought are really in places we never should have been. 
That is a very powerful thing. Think about it. Some of the battles we fought are in places we never should have been. You know, and I know, some of the places that we shouldn't go to, some of the things we shouldn't watch, some of the conversation we shouldn't have, some of the thoughts we shouldn't think about, you see. But the problem is for many, many people, they just keep going to these places. That's why the enemy is very, very cunning and deceitful. Just like the king of Aram. He says, I will, what? Plot and I will plan to set up camp in such and such a place. All right? So some of the battles that we are fighting, the key is always to listen to what's on the inside instead of responding to what's on the outside. You see, and I say this and I say it again, God's presence is guiding you. There is a man on the inside. And, and it's an incredible when you read Elisha, how he would know the situation, how he would fight the situation, okay? By telling the king of Israel, do not go to such and such a place. Actually, I want to just read, if we could, that would be fantastic. Let's go to, okay, the scripture that we talk about in 2 Kings. And uh, I think I want to just read the rest of it so you uh, have a better understanding, okay, of what we are talking about. In 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8 to 23. And let us keep reading that so I can just bring that up to you even clearer. Uh, I want to start again from verses 8. Now the king of Aram was at war with Israel. After conferring with his officers, he said, I will set up my camp in such and such a place. So the man of God sent word to the king of Israel, beware of passing that place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel checked on the place indicated by the man of God. Time and again, Elisha warned the king. Look at that. It's an interesting thing. So time and again, see, Elisha knows. Elisha knows where and when the king of Aram is going to set up camp. So, so that he was on his guard in such places. Verse 11, this enraged the king of Aram. He summoned his officers and demanded of them, tell me which of us is on the side of the king of Israel. There you go. He's trying to find out who is it. Was there a spy within my kingdom? Or was there a spy within the castle, within my reign, that is leaking out information to the king of Israel? So, Listen to what his officer says. None of us, my lord, the king, said one of his officers, but Elisha, the prophet who is in Israel, tells the king of, uh, uh, tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bedroom. Whoa, that is incredible. This is the king of Aram who is plotting and planning in his bedroom such and such a place is going to go to set up camp. And the man of God knows the thoughts, okay, of the king of Aram. And he says here, but Elijah the prophet who is in Israel tells the king of Israel the very words you speak in your bed. Verse 13, go find out where he is, the king ordered, so that I can send men and capture him. The report came back, he is in Dotham. Then he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They went by night and surrounded the city. Look at what the enemy would always plan to do. He will send forces, not just one, but a strong force to what? Capture Elijah, to obviously wanting to kill him. He said, the enemy, when he knows that you are walking with God when He knows that you are with God and God is with you, what does He plan to do? He will send forces 
to destroy you. When the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Oh no, my Lord, what shall we do? The servant asked. And this is the reply from Elisha. Don't be afraid, the prophet answered. Those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed, Open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. As the enemy came down toward him, Elisha prayed to the Lord, strike this army with blindness. So he struck them with blindness and Elisha had asked. Elisha then told them, this is not the road. This is not the road. Uh, uh, this, and this is not the city. Follow me and I will lead you to the man you are looking for. Isn't it incredible? These are the strong forces that is coming to attack Elisha has now been blinded and they are actually with the man who they are after and this man is saying, no, follow me and I'll lead you to the man that you're looking for. And he led them. After they entered the city, Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men so that they can see. Then the Lord opened their eyes and they looked and there they were inside Samaria. Then the king of Israel say, saw them. He asked Elijah, shall I kill them, my father? Shall I kill them? Do not kill them, he answered. Would you kill those you have captured with your own sword and bow? Set food and water before them so that they may eat and to their master. So he prepared a great feast for them. And after they had finished eating and drinking, he sent them away and they returned to their master. So the bands from Aram Stop raiding Israel's territory. That is an incredible victory that Israel had uh, obviously received. You see, I was saying before, the key is always to listen to what's on the inside instead of responding to what's on the outside. Because sometimes the outside looks doom and gloom. But yet, inside, there is a voice speaking to you. It's like there's a man on the inside. The enemy will be thinking, how did you know? It's like he was wondering, how did Elisha know what the king is speaking about in his bedroom? See, I'm talking about the presence of God. The presence of God is your protector. So no matter what you're going through, as this story and this account of Elisha, who walks with God, who has done incredible miracles, who has received a second or double portion of Elijah's anointing, is able to, what? Just tell the king of Israel what is coming up against him. How did he know? How did he have that uh, perception? Do you know what? Like I said before, there is a man on the inside. The enemy will use such places to trap you. Okay? The enemy will use such and such a place. I remember what I said earlier. Okay? It's important that you and I recognize that if you have faced a previous battle, where is that battle? The battle is in such and such a place. Now, let me just, just, just bring up another note here. Places is not just about where you go with your body, but where you go with your mind. Places is not just about where you go with your body but it's where you go with your mind. Where does your mind take you? As soon as you hear an incident or as soon as you hear 
a negative report or as soon as you know something is not right or something is coming up against you or something that the enemy is throwing at you, where does your mind go immediately? Some people will be thinking, oh, wow, well, if I'm being ill-treated, my mind will be going, yep, I'm going to give back to you what you gave me. All right? Basically, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Or some people, when they go through some uh, 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 just thoughts that are not right, you see, so their mind goes there, okay, and their mind begins to take them there to such a place. And God is saying that every time we think and we begin to use our mind that the enemy would, would trap us every time we go to such a place that we shouldn't be, not just with our body, I'm talking about with our mind. Because the enemy attacks you in that regard first, even as he plans, obviously, with his mind, where he's going to attack you. But every time you go there, there, the place, with your mind, what happens? We can feel, uh, 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 we, we, can, we can become judgmental and we may ha- uh, start having a comparison. We may feel that we are missing out on something. How does that happen? With your mind. Because you'll be thinking, oh, yep, this is, this is what happened to me. Uh, they, they, they ill-treated me. I'm going to be angry with them for a long time. Or that person has got more than I have. Why is that person so blessed? Then we begin to compare, correct? Then we begin to say, oh yeah, I I, I want more of that. Or I want more of this. We begin to compare. I don't have enough. We feel that we're missing out on something. Where does it all begin? Every time we go there to such places with our mind. Wouldn't it be great? Think about this for a moment. Wouldn't it be great if you have someone on the inside who would who will guide you and lead you? I'm sure the King of Israel is definitely pleased, incredibly pleased to hear from the man of God, Elisha, what's going to happen. Elisha began to warn the king, do not go to such and such a place. Do not go there because the king of Aram has set up camp and set up ambush. Can you imagine that? Wouldn't it be great to have someone, okay, on the inside who is always telling you, giving you the, so to speak, inside information of what's going to happen. This is the, the, the reality, okay? You and I have somebody on the inside. We're talking about the presence of God. We're talking about who God is. When Jesus left the earth after his ministry, before he was taken up to heaven, this is what he said, I will send you the helper. I will send you the comforter. I will send you the Holy Spirit who will lead you into all truth. I will send you someone who's going to abide with you forever. And this person, you and I know, is the Holy Spirit. He lives on the inside of us. He abides with us. He gives us the inside information to guard us, to protect us, to lead us. That's why if you can, and I can, okay, always look toward what? God's perspective is in this battle that we are facing or in these places that you found yourself in, can I encourage you today, okay, recognize who is on the inside of you. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It's that you and I don't have to be depicted, okay, by the things that happens around us Because the enemy is always going to be throwing and firing darts at you to try and take you out. Even in this season, like I said earlier, the enemy will use situations, will use circumstances, will 
cause you to take your mind, not just your body, but take your mind first. If you're not careful, guess what happened? Your body will eventually follow you there. That's why a lot of people, you know, when they are being challenged to do something or when the Lord spoke to them about stepping out of the boat and doing something, I mean, most of the time they are already defeated even before they started. Why? Because they begin to say, I can't do it. It's too hard. It's too difficult. It's too inconvenient. It all started with their mind. The enemy takes them to such places. You see, whereas... There are others who would make a decision and say, God, if this is what I am to travel to, or if this is the road I am to take, is this, this uh, uh, the, the, the appointment that you sent or set for me that I have to go on? This is the path that I have to travel on. God, in my mind and in my spirit, I thank you that if this is the way you've chosen, God, I'm going to go there. All right, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to trust you because why? You are with me. You are with me. You will give me the victory because you are the Lord, my God. And if you can understand it, if I can understand it, it will be an incredible thing to recognize the presence of God is always there to protect us. God will show you where to be on your guard if only you would give Him the opportunity. Stop, stop letting your mind defeat you. Stop letting your mind when you go to such and such a place to defeat you. Continue to call upon the name of the Lord. Continue to recognize that God is on your side. He is for you, not against you. God can show you, okay, about yourself, what He knows from the inside out. So I'm saying when you go through those times, God is actually showing you what is it that is on your inside. He knows more about you on your inside. Why? Because the Bible says He created you. So He knows how to counsel you. He created you. His Holy Spirit will know how to guide you. His Holy Spirit will know how to lead you to the path that He has chosen for you. So listen to the voice on the inside the voice of the Holy Spirit. God will not strengthen you, okay? For a battle, He did not call you to fight. God will not strengthen you for a battle He did not call you to fight. Every battle that you and I are currently facing, if you have won your previous battle, you've learned from your previous battle, and the current battle that you and I are going through, God will not call you to fight that battle if He knows you can't handle it. But the thing is, you and I are going to step up and step out of the things that we faced before, learn from them, and in the next chapter of our lives, in this next season of our lives, we begin to walk in that step and we begin to learn, we begin to listen to the voice on the inside. Listen to the voice that the Holy Spirit is guiding you and speaking to you about, okay? God will always lead you from victory to victory. And I've said this before, the only time you don't move forward is when you don't learn from your past battles. The only time you can't move forward or you can't uh, uh, keep progressing is when you fail the test. When you fail the test, what do you do? You resit the exam so that you can keep moving forward. And I believe with all of my heart, the next season for us, for you and I pray that it will be, and this is what I feel for, for, for me personally and for our church, the next season God is going to bring us in is going to be a season where we're going to see victory upon victory. Hallelujah. We're going to see 
something God is doing that is going to be incredible, that's going to blow us off our minds, that's going to be saying, oh God, we didn't realize, we didn't know that this is, this is the path that you have for us. Because God's path for us is what? Always from glory to glory, strength to strength. And I really believe with all my whole heart, God is going to lead you and lead me, all right? When we come to the close of these challenges, many of us will begin to look back and just say, God, how we wish that our focus was not on all the things that is around us, but how we wish that our focus will be to listen on the voice that you have been telling us on the inside to recognize that you are with us no matter what we go through. Lord, we don't have to be discouraged. We don't have to be dismayed. We don't have to give up. We don't have to surrender to the enemy. We don't have to be sidetracked by the enemy. But rather, Lord, that we would and should be looking at things from your perspective and to recognize that, God, this is a victory upon victory that you are showing as you showed uh, Elisha, as you showed the king of Israel, how the enemy who is cunning and who can, who can deceive and de- deceive us, if you can show somebody like Elisha, you can show us. You can tell us what is going to come, what is going to happen. Lord, our heart and our, our plan and our, our, our desire is that we will always look to you. We will always inquire of the Lord what the next step is going to be. See, I want to challenge you today as you listen to this message. Recognize that God is with you. He's on your side. And do not look at the outward uh, appearance. Do not look at the outward circumstances and situations that so many of us are going through at the moment, you know, spiritually, relationally, financially. It has been, it has been tough hasn't been easy. The world, that, like I said, that we know as normal is, is over. Nothing's going to be normal anymore. But we're going to step into what I call the new normal from God's perspective. The new normal. Recognizing that as we pursue Him, as we seek Him, as we run after God's heart, God's presence is always with you. So recognize that today. And be at peace. Rest and be at peace. Okay? Don't go and fight the old battles anymore. Learn from those lessons. And now, the battle that you and I are in, remember, God will not strengthen you for a battle He did not call you to fight. Even as Israel was being attacked by the enemies. Did you notice that God has always been with Israel? The only thing God has always asked Israel or the kings of Israel to always acknowledge God. Because once the king abandons God and and go after foreign gods, the nation of Israel is defeated. But the moment the king recognizes that God is with them, is with the nation, what happens? They grow from victory to victory. And look, in this situation, God brought a man of God, Elijah, to inform the king of Israel the attacks that are coming towards them, okay? See, God will use people. God will use people around you that are, that are walking with the Lord to guide you and to lead you. But it all happens from where? From the inside. There is a man on the inside. There is a voice on the inside that is guiding you and leading you. Elisha was giving information to the king of Israel on the attacks of the enemy. See that? That's what I'm saying today. If you and I can really capture that. The enemy wanted to get rid of Elisha. See? The enemy, the king is saying, who is this that is leaking out the information? Because nobody knows. I have in my mind set up such and such a place where we're going to set camp, but nobody knows. But there's somebody the officer says there's somebody, this man called Elisha, who has been telling the king of Israel what you are planning to do. And guess what? The king of Aram says, find me this man. F- 
find me this man. The enemy wanted to get rid of Elisha. So my question to you and I today is, are you a threat to the enemy? See, the reason why today you are even online watching this message, okay, you are, you are uh, participating in your walk and your journey with God, okay, you have not uh, given up on God. The very fact that you're watching, you haven't given up on God. And God is speaking to you today. Don't give in to the enemy. Don't give in to those thoughts of destruction, those thoughts of comparison, those thoughts of you're not good enough, those thoughts of jealousy, whatever it is, don't give in to those thoughts. Don't go to such and such a place. The Lord is speaking to you. The very fact that you are online watching is incredible. That means you are a threat to the enemy. And I want my life to be a threat to the enemy. Because why? When you're a threat to the enemy, guess what's going to happen to you? He, he is going to come after you. He is going to stop you in your tracks. And I'm not going to allow him. Why? Because God is on the inside of me. He's going to guide me, lead me. He's going to bless me. He's going to prosper me. He's going to cause me to do things that he has always wanted me to do. He has always wanted me to fulfill. And it's the same thing for you. When you are a threat to the enemy, the enemy will come and he will set up camp. He will try to take you to such and such a place to attack you. But you know what you can do? If you are saying no to the enemy, why? Because you want to receive and continually receive and fulfill the purposes of God for your life. That you can experience the reality of Jesus every day of your life that you can be victorious in your Christian war, that you can understand God's plan for you and purpose for you is to bless you, to give you a hope and a future, not to harm you. So today, how do I know if I'm a threat to the enemy? When things in my life is not going the way I thought it would be. Oh, that might be a bit of revelation for some of you. How do I know? I'm a threat to the enemy because there are certain things that happens in my life that I thought, oh God, why did this happen? The Lord allows me to go through that season. Why? So that I can learn to rely on Him, call upon His name, recognize His voice on the inside of me, guiding me, leading me, blessing me, prospering me in every way because the enemy will be jealous when you're successful. The enemy will be jealous when you are using your gifts and your talents and your blessing to further the kingdom of God and he will try to stop you. But if you and I can understand, the moment you begin to fulfill the purposes of God or the purpose God has for you, the enemy knows and he will dispatch his forces to try and stop you. So today, even as I bring this message to a close, the pursuit of God's presence is to recognize there is always somebody on the inside. And that is the Holy Spirit abiding in you. He lives within you. He will continue to show you things if you give him the opportunity to guide you and to lead you. He will reveal to you the heart of God. He will bring you back to Bethel where you recognize the blessing, where you recognize your encounter with God, where you recognize that even as the Holy Spirit reminds you, okay, those past battles, if you can learn to deal with them, okay, you don't have to keep fighting those past battles, but you can enter into now a new battle where the Lord will strengthen you through this new battle that you will once again, through this experience, experience the presence and the reality and the power and the anointing of God right now in this season of your life. Why don't you close your eyes as I conclude, as I pray for you today. Lord, we thank you this afternoon for who you are. Thank you that you're always with us. Today, we thank you that even as you have shown the man of God, Elijah, in the Bible, of the things that the enemy plans and the schemes and, and the ways he wants to destroy 
your kingdom and he wants to destroy your children. Lord God, even as you have shown Elijah, Elisha, you can show us today. Lord, as we give you the opportunity, as you continue to lead us and guide us and teach us, Father, we pray today that we will continue to once again realize and recognize that your presence is with us, that we are anointed, we are called, we are chosen by you, that, God, we don't have to live our lives with fear, but rather with faith in who you are. And next, next season, the next season, of our lives, the next chapter of our lives will be paved with God's victory upon victory. This is the arrow of victory, the arrow of the Lord, because the battle that we fight today, Lord, belongs to you. We are not just fighting alone, but you are with us. We thank you for that. We just pray this week, may you strengthen each one of us for those that are not well in body or may be sick in any form or any way, God, we pray for your healing. Touch in Jesus' name to touch everyone that is not well, Lord, that is watching this uh, uh, podcast. We pray for those that may be struggling financially, Lord, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out your blessing, even, Lord, in this time of, of difficulty you're still able to do exceedingly abundantly, far above all that we pray and ask for or even dare to imagine. Lord, I just pray today this word will bless many, many lives and encourage many people that you are with us even through the the, the times of great celebration and the times of great challenges and obstacles. I pray and ask this in Jesus' name. And everybody say, Amen. Praise the Lord. May we you be blessed. Take care. Have a great week. And I shall uh, see you again next week as we continue to touch on this subject of the pursuit of God's presence. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.